Hello, and welcome to the first video in the series Introduction to Digital Logic. You're probably wondering, what is digital logic? Digital is defined as expressed as a series of digits, zeros and ones, typically represented by the values of a physical quantity, such as voltage or magnetic polarization. Logic is defined as reasoning conducted or assessed according to strict principles of validity. So let's first go over what a logic 1 and what a logic 0 is. In any digital logic device, there is a certain voltage threshold that when reached reads a logic 0, or off, or false, or low state, or a logic 1, or on, or true, or high state. In the example I made up, we have an input that will register a logic 1 for a voltage between 2 volts and 5 volts, and if the logic is between 0.7 volts and 0 volts, it will register a logic 0. On the other hand, this logic device will output anywhere between 5 volts to 2.5 volts for a logic 1 and 0.4 volts to 0 volts for a logic 0. Notice that the output has a narrower range to ensure that at the input, the logic level is not misread. These logic 1s and zeros are what people are talking about when they say that computers operate off of zeros and 1s. When a computer operates off of 1s and zeros, it is using the binary system with Boolean algebra, which we will go over in a later video. These logical 1 and zeros reach a computer chip through a square wave pattern depicted at the top right of the screen. On the y-axis, we have the voltage, which is abbreviated as logic 1, or logic 0. On the x-axis, we have time. To start off, we'll be going over the period of a simple periodic square wave. A period is the measure of the time that has to pass for a periodic waveform to repeat the same pattern. In this case, the waveform repeats the same pattern three times within the time of a second. So the period is one second over three cycles, or 0.33 seconds. Frequency, on the other hand, is the number of cycles or repeats of the wave in one second. So being there are three cycles in one second, there are three hertz or three cycles a second. If you have the frequency, you can find the period by taking 1 over the frequency. If you have the period, you can find the frequency by taking 1 over the period. Now in the top right, the square wave looks perfect, which is unrealistic. In reality, the square wave will look something like this. Now let's go over the parts of the square wave. We have the amplitude, which is the measure of the baseline to the height of the square wave. We have the rise time, which is the amount of time for the voltage to go from 10% of amplitude to 90% of the amplitude on the rising edge, or the edge that goes upwards. The fall time, which is the time it takes for the voltage to go from 90% of the amplitude to 10% of the amplitude on the falling edge, or the edge that goes downward. Note the rise time and fall time is sometimes referring to the length of time between logic low to logic high and logic high to logic low, but in practice it is commonly 10% to 90% amplitude and 90% to 10% amplitude. Next we have the pulse width, which is the time it takes to go from 50% of the voltage of the amplitude at the leading edge to 50% of the voltage of the amplitude at the falling edge. In this example, we will be using a pulse width of 0.165 seconds. I have also labeled the square wave with some terms used to describe the variations in the wave, like the overshoot, which occurs when the voltage goes over the amplitude, ringing, which is much like a vibration of a ringing bell that happens when the voltage is trying to reach an equilibrium, a droop that occurs when the voltage is about to decrease, and finally, the undershoot, which occurs when going back to zero voltage. To finish off this video, let's use the pulse width along with the period to find the duty cycle. The duty cycle is the ratio of the pulse width over the period of the waveform times 100%. So if we plug in our 0.165 second pulse width with our 0.33 second period, we get a duty cycle of 50%. That concludes this video. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.